It's the news and information you want and the hour of radio you simply can't miss. The KBOW Party Line. Today's show is brought to you by... And we welcome you to the KBOW Party Line. We're happy to have you along with us here on our Wednesday afternoon. The Party Line brought to you each and every weekday afternoon by the great community-minded folks at Century 21 Shea Realty, the Continental Gardens, Dugan Dolan Mortuary, Southwest Montana Community Health Center, Community Hospital of Anaconda, Brothers Water Treatment, The Broken Arrow in Deer Lodge, Taupam Food Stores all across Montana, United Way of Butte and Anaconda, Stephen Laura Daniel, Janelle Morgan with Century 21 Shea Realty, Crazy Carol's Casino and Mill Bar, The Butte Four Seas, Harrington Surgical Supply, and the Wise River Mercantile get together each and every weekday afternoon to bring you the Intermountain West's longest running telephone talk show, the KBOW Party Line, and we're happy to have you along with us on our Wednesday, September 23rd get together. Scott Perini in for our own Ron Davis, and just like the last couple of days, another great show lined up for you today as. Uh, it's a brown bag day, along with uh, the Butte Serbo Public Archives, and welcome, ladies, to the studio. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, you are Scott. welcome. It's kind of a, a little, uh, you know, I'm, I'm great to be here. It's grateful for me to be here, but I'm also looking forward to the show, too, because we've got the Butte Genealogy Club joining us in yes. studio for today's brown bag lunch. So I, I kind of feel honored, and I, I, I'm kind of glad it worked out this way, that I got to be here. I am, too. I thought, I thought you actually manipulated it so that you could be here, because um, as regular listeners know, you have done quite quite a lot of family history and that's how we know each other from uh, you coming up to the archives and uh, which is random little and snippets little, and from little there's... snippets here and there and uh, I have learned a lot about our holdings from <laughs> Scott going can you help me find this and oh, you know I I, I, I I treasure the archives <laughs> and I give a, a lot of credit to the ladies up there and for what they've done and what they've helped me with and what they've allowed me access to so honestly it's it's a win-win all the way around yeah yeah we enjoy we like seeing you come in well thank you very much and you know <laughs> yeah. we like seeing you and we like our brown big lunches here on the party line so uh, with yeah. that Kim I guess I'll go ahead and Hand it over to you. All right. Thank you, Scott. As you all know, um, my name is Kim. I've been at the Butte Archives for about uh, nine, coming up on nine years now. Um, and I love it. And it's fun. And um, one of the things that I get to do is organize this brown bag lunch, which um, up until this year we've had in person. And now we get to do it on the radio. I don't know when we'll be going back in person that we still don't have enough information to make that decision. So with that being said, um, I'm super excited to have the Butte Silver Bow Genealogy Society here today. Um, they meet in our facility uh, once a month, and uh, I'm really excited to have them here. So we have Julie Bushmaker and Linda Lee Holmes. Julie, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, hi. Um, thank you for inviting us to come today with Kim from the archives uh, to talk about the Butte uh, Genealogy Society. Um, I am the president currently and have been by default for a number of years. And uh, Linda Lee has been kind of my partner in crime in this. And we started because one day we came to the state meeting here that was held in Butte uh, for the state. Uh, genealogy society and they said you know Butte does not have a group that meets would you guys be willing to to start it so um, I looked over at Linda Lee Linda Lee shook her head yes so Why off not? we went <laughs> and when when was that it was well that was in uh, the fall of 2008 so we officially started okay. in January of 2009 okay so not a real long-running group I mean, you've been around for about 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, that is fabulous. And uh, what, so what do you do at your meetings? You meet once a month. We do. Um, we sort of uh, alternate our meetings. We'll have one meeting where we'll try to have a program and learn something. And then the next meeting, we all get together and work on our problems and brick walls and, and offer research help. Works out really well. Nice. And we all learn a lot every time. I bet. I bet. Yeah, we've been meeting now the second uh, Thursday of the month at 630 up at the archives. The archives uh, have been very generous in offering 
uh, place for us to meet. Um, we do now have to have people uh, let us know if they are going to come to a meeting so that we can limit the number of people that we have and make sure that we have um, our social distancing and we also wear our mask at the meetings and stuff but one of the big thing that we love to do is to actually help people uh, when they come to our meetings find out what's available at the archives so we go through um, what's available, uh, the birth records, the death records that are housed there. We have them uh, learn about the Polk City directories that they have from uh, 1884 to, uh, I don't know when the last I one is. I think uh, up to 2008, I think. We have and, a complete set. And they're just uh, amazing to see what you can find there. Uh, we also show them about the school census that are housed at the archives, and that's used lots of times um, in place of our birth records if we can't find somebody in the birth records. And Linda has actually a lot of experience with those. Oh, the school census records are one of my favorite tools because years ago they lived in the vault at the school clerk's office where my mother worked, and that's where I first started doing genealogy. I go into that vault and drag those books out and take my little index cards and start searching for my family. Oh, so I'm wow. very fond of those records, and they're really valuable. And I just want to add, the school census records cover, what they're doing is they're counting all of the children from birth up to 21. Um, they do not tell you where the children went to school. Their purpose is, just like now, to determine... Uh, how many children will be leaving the system through graduation, how many will be coming into the schools, being, you know, coming up into kindergarten, first, second grade, um, how many teachers they'll need, where they're going to live, you know, which schools, need, you know, do we need to build a new one or whatever. So it is merely counting the children in the school, but it has their dates of birth and it has their addresses. Um, the early ones don't, but the um, the more once they standardized uh, had the parents' names and their addresses, they are very, very useful for finding families. Um, and so what else what's your favorite resource that you like to dig into? Well I every time I go up there to research for Kim, I find something new that I love. <laughs> and uh, this month it happens to be the miners books. And they're located um, downstairs in the actual vault. Yes, they're uh, you have to. They're about, they each weigh about a ton to lift them up. But they start from oh, don't exaggerate. They're only half a ton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they uh, start from 1914 and they go up, I think, to 1928. And if you have an unusual name, not a Kelly or a Sullivan, a Sullivan or a <laughs> Shea name. Uh, you're able to find basically uh, month by month where each miner worked. And I love that because then uh, mm -hmm. the information that we can give back to people that request information is what was the name of the mine that they worked at. Um, and we can show them what that mine looked like with pictures from the archives. And we can also show them um, their work number wish we had uh, the employment records that went along with them, but they're just amazing to see. Right, right, they are. Linda Lee, what's your favorite uh, I resource? really like the newspapers. I've always loved those before the, the remodel. I used to go up to the, the old archives and just drag those volumes out, and you can get lost in them. And you can still do that. You can. Listeners? There's, <laughs> there's such valuable information if you're researching Butte people because they used to write interesting things in newspapers like who was visiting who and where they went on vacation and when their cousin or uncle or aunt was with them and you can get so much information it's just really fun and then you get lost and find stories about the Hindenburg <laughs> <laughs> I was going to just uh, chime in here because I agree with you because uh, doing my research, you, you stumble upon these little articles. And I mean, they counted everything in detail where the family packed up the car and went to Basin for the day. Or mm -hmm. if somebody got married, it was right down to uh, what they ate, what kind of plate it was served on, what kind of floral and arrangements they had. the list of all the gifts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they didn't leave anything out. 
let you continue on, Kim. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Julie, do you want to? And I should pop in here and say, not only uh, is is Julie president of the Genealogy Society, she's also one of uh, our volunteers. And uh, she gets to work with me because I'm in charge of research. So when people um, from out of state or really anywhere, a lot of them are here in town too, and they call in and they they request uh, for us to do research. Um, some of the hard ones, the ones I think might be hard, I pass on to Julie because she is a, a bulldog or a badger <laughs> when it comes to uh, digging up information. Yeah, I'm lucky. Uh, we have about six volunteers uh, from our group that actually do different types of volunteering for the archives. Uh, uh, three of us actually work with with uh, Kim and do research on requests that come from all over the world. We had one uh, that I worked on last month that this gentleman was from Norway, but he's living in Switzerland now and wanted to know about his uh, family member that an, a great uncle that came here and about what he would have done here in in butte because he was a young man and we were able to find out the boarding house that he lived in we were able to find out uh what church he went to that he was a ropeman uh which helped which they helped uh lower um, the miners and also the materials up from the from the mines and so we used that miners book that I talked about. We used the directories. We used the census records uh, in Butte. We luckily didn't find any deaths, but he asked about another gentleman that came from the same area, and he did die in one of the mining accidents, so we were able to give him information, a death certificate um, from that gentleman's death. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, that was a that was a good one. We get a lot of really interesting requests, and some are very simple. To you know, can, do you have a birth certificate or do you have a death certificate? Um, to sometimes it's well, I just want to know where my grandparents lived, and sometimes that will explode into where they lived in this house, and they did this, and they did this, and then you know you find out this whole huge history about them that. They didn't know or we didn't know. Sometimes we unlock skeletons in the closets. There are babies that maybe people didn't know about, you know, born and or died. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Kim, yeah. just this morning, uh, was uh, copying a number of pages of a court case where a, a lady uh, wrote in wanting to know about her great-grandfather's sister. And we were able to find her in the uh, directories, okay, her husband. And in the newspapers then, we found out about this really great scandalous <laughs> divorce that she went through where she sued her husband. Uh, they were married about six months. Uh, she claimed adultery as well as, um, as uh I think cruelty. Abuse. Yep, abuse, cruelty. And so we were, a were able to supply the information from the newspapers, from the directories. We were able to find his first wife's burial place. And Kim now has is working diligently on giving the information about the court case that went to the district court and the Supreme Court of Montana. Yeah, it was, I don't even know how many pages there were. It was, had to be over 100. It took me almost an hour and a half to just sit there. And it's, and these aren't, um, you know, papers that we're looking at. These are on a microfilm reel. So we have an ancient microfilm reader, and it will only talk to Windows 7. So we're thinking, please don't die. I hope this <laughs> computer does not die. And, uh, and so we scan it from the film onto a thumb drive, and then I will um, download it onto my computer, and we'll send them a link to access all of those hundreds of pages. And uh, not all of the cases that we do are hundreds of pages, but uh, yeah, it's it's quite a process. So yeah. and that I can imagine. I mean, it, it fits probably right into uh, you know yeah. what you're all about—that research. Yeah, it is. 
It and so is. How about if we take a quick time out and then we'll come back and we'll continue our chat with uh, the archives and the Buttes Robo genealogy. And uh, with that, we'll continue along with more of your KBOW party line. Stay along with us here on your hometown station. Hi, this is Jennifer Shea, broker owner with Century 21 Shea Realty in Butte and Anaconda. Well, real estate is selling and we are servicing clients during this crisis that we are going through. drive through real estate, electronic signatures, virtual tours, video conference calls, in-person meetings using stringent guidelines to keep us all healthy. We are prepared to serve both buyers and sellers in a safe and healthy manner. Call us today, 406-723-5455. Century 21 Shea Realty with offices in Butte, Anaconda, and Great Falls. Century 21 Shea Realty, independently owned and operated. This is Holly at Southwest Montana Community Health Center, and we want you to protect yourself and your family this season with an annual flu vaccine for everyone who is at least six months old. While the timing of flu season is unpredictable, it can begin as early as October and as late as May. If you have not had your regular wellness checkups, the flu vaccine can be included in your exam. Insurance covers flu shots at 100% and uninsured patients qualify for a no-charge vaccine. Call us at 723-4075 for more information or to schedule an appointment. A lifetime of love, you lived a lifetime of love. In a time of personal loss, there are so many memories. I remember the good times together. A lifetime of good times. In your family's sorrow, we can provide every service and option and leave you with loving memories. A lifetime of love. Memories of a lifetime of love. Dugan Dolan Mortuary, we care. At 1805 Meadowlark, 723-3239. Continental Gardens is so much more than walls and windows. This is Christine. It's where you always feel comfortable, safe, and secure. It's retirement living the way it's meant to be, with bright, light-filled, airy spaces and apartments, and freedom from the chores of daily maintenance. Continental Gardens promotes living longer, healthier, and happier lives, and staying independent in your own home. If you're 62 and older and living on a fixed income, pick up your application today at the Continental Gardens, 100 Gardens Way in Butte, and we'll get you on our waiting list. Equal housing opportunity. The KPOW party line as we move through our Wednesday afternoon together with you. And we've got Kim from the Butte Sorbo Archives joining us here in studio, as well as uh, the ladies from the Butte Sorbo Genealogy Society. So once again, thank you, ladies, for taking time out to join us here on the party line. And uh, Kim, most of all, for, uh, you know, continuing with the brown bag lunches. Yeah, it's been really fun. It has, and it I'm has actually learning. I'm actually learning as we go. And I am too. <laughs> I'm getting a little more comfortable with the mic. I Pretty think. soon, you'll just be, you know, in here. You, you'll know how to run the controls and everything. Oh no! <laughs> you were already telling me when to take my break, so I there know. you go. <laughs> All right. So, um, Linda Lee, you had mentioned that you have speakers come in, or that you do a little program when you have your meetings. So, tell me what kind of uh, programs and learning experiences you all offer. Oh, we um, there's so many different things in genealogy, so many tools. So we've talked about, of course, DNA, which is the exciting new thing, uh, internet research. Uh, Ancestry.com, using newspapers. There are so many online databases now, and uh, so we try to cover all of those. Immigration. Um, Ellis Island is a particular interest to a lot of people, and one of our members is an expert on researching there. Uh, also, lineage societies like Daughters of the American Revolution, uh, Mayflower Descendants, how you qualify for those and how you research. There's there's always something new, and, and then we're always open to suggestions if our, our members have questions, and we'll try and research and come up with a program on that subject. So do you have speakers come in, or are these things that you all have learned from experience and you're share, sharing uh, the wealth of A knowledge? lot of them we share the wealth, but we have had speakers also. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends on who we can get to come and speak. We've done some fun things on different ethnic groups, and we've had people come in and bring uh, we, we did an Italian one where we had some very interesting beverages shared and uh, wait a minute were you did you fill out the appropriate forms to have interesting beverages no we snuck them in <laughs> no, <we just> snuck. <laughs> I didn't hear that. it was bootleg <laughs> literally yeah, uh, that's, that's one of the joys of having uh, ethnic groups still 
represented here yes. in Butte is that, that we get people f that are Italian, Mexican. We had a lady that wanted to go to Croatia, and so uh, we did uh, a program on how to research in Croatia, and she then came back and told us some really good things about uh, how to hire basically a tour tourist um a person like a that actually a tour guide that actually lived there and um so she uh, gave us some ideas about how to do that and she ended up uh, she had a huge collection uh, that her mother had put together and she was like i don't want to keep these in my basement forever and ever and so what she did is she ended up donating all of her mother's ancestry uh, information to a woman's um, museum in Iowa. And oh, she wow. talked about how she got that delivered because uh, all that research was actually done in Iowa. Right. Wow, that so is That was interesting. And we are going to uh, tap Kim to come talk about the Sanborn maps. Oh, I would love to come and talk about Sanborn maps. Um, Sanborn maps are my favorite thing. As uh, anybody who's attended uh, the brown bags know, I talk about them um, whenever I can. The Sanborg Fire Insurance Company was started in uh, 1865, um, first uh, in Tennessee, and then they moved up to Boston. And they went for about 100 years mapping all of the industrialized cities and towns in the United States every few years so as they grew and they would send surveyors out every few years to check the data remeasure things like that so what they show um, they're creating a map based uh, a map database so you can look at these maps and they have the outlines of all the the streets and all of the buildings on there and you can tell by the colors of the buildings what the building material is, whether it is wood frame, whether it, it is concrete block, whether it is fireproof, um, whether it is brick, uh, you can just tell instantly. You can tell where the windows are, you can tell how many stories there are because of the code. You get It's so easy to learn how to read these maps. And uh, Butte has, I forget how many there are, it's starting in 1884, updated in 1888, 1890, uh, 1900, 1907, 1916. 1916 is kind of our base map, mm -hmm. which is brilliant because um, Butte kind of peaked during World War Two, World War One, and uh, the population has has fallen since its peak of between 90 and 100,000 people at that time. So the 1916 map is just a valuable, valuable map. So we have um, a lot of copies of those uh, that you can come and look at, but they are also available online for free at the Library of Congress. So you can just go in your little search, search bar in Google and search Sanborn, S-A-N-B-O-R-N, Sanborn Maps, Library of Congress, Butte, Montana, or Butte, Silver Bow, um, because you don't want to get Crested Butte or Butte County, California. <laughs> um, so they are just a wonderful and beautiful resource to look at um, from the comfort of your own home or come up and see us. But uh, they do complement uh, the Polk directories, when you find somebody there and you find their address, then you want to go look at the Sanborn map and see where they lived. And then, if we're lucky, we will have what we call the orange cards, the tax cards, which have um, photos, most of which were taken in 1959. Linda Lee, what do you want to say? I think there, I love those maps, and there's nothing more fun than to drive around Butte and look at the places where your ancestors lived. As um, My family's been here since 1877. We're on our eighth generation now. So there are a lot of houses to, to look at, and it's just really exciting when you find one, and, and it's still there, and you can compare what it looks like now to what it looked like then. Just a great resource. It is, absolutely. We have a lot of maps. As a matter of fact, yesterday or Monday, they were running together, I was uh, getting into our vertical files, and the maps were just getting all chunky. So... 
now we can go in and look for maps from the early, early days, the 1910s, 1920s. It's a, it's a little easier to find them because a lot of times people want to know specifically, you know, my grandparents lived here in the 1930s. You know, what did Butte look like? What did the streets look like in the 1930s? And uh, um, that's one of the resources that we have. And I think maps, I mean, they're one of my favorite resources. Um, maps and things like the miners books and things like that um, so when people if people wanted to join mm -hmm. or come to your meetings um, should they bring like their a laptop or a tablet or a computer with them uh, if they have one available yes we like to have them bring whatever they would like to have us look at okay sometimes people will bring their computers more often than not they'll just bring a piece of paper with this is the person i'm looking for we ask them to if they know uh, when were they born when they got married when they died and what were their children's names, their mother and father's names, if they know that. If they don't know that information, just bring what whatever bring they what you can. Know, right? Bring what you know. We yeah. start with, we always like to start with them and then work our way back into mm -hmm. their ancestors rather than skipping generation. That makes it harder right. to, so to it make sounds, sure you've got the right person. It's, uh, and do you have to be a member of the Genealogy Society to you know to get your assistance oh heck no no <laughs> we're available uh lots of times people just call me on the phone mm -hmm. um my telephone number at home is 494-4934 and then we invite them to come to a meeting um we're just there to help people uh learn a little bit more about their family or or their city that they live in which is butte mm-hmm uh, we have a Facebook page, so you can just search on Facebook for Butte Silver Bow Genealogy Society. Um, join our, our Facebook group, and you can post questions there, and we're really happy to help anytime. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank Facebook is very helpful for things like that. Yeah, we've had requests um, that I've gone up to the archives that have come through our Facebook page, uh, gentlemen. Uh, wanted us to look up some information for a family member that lived here in Fintown. So he, that was fun to look up for him. Wonderful. Um, I just lost, I had a great question. I just lost it out of my brain. Well, one of the things <laughs> that we're looking forward to next yeah. year, uh, just this coming weekend, actually, we would be uh, being co-host with the state uh, out at Fairmont for the state uh, meeting last year or this year we were supposed to have it um, uh, out at Fairmont and we were having some really exciting speakers talk about DNA mm. uh, probably one of the biggest authority on DNA was going to uh, come to Butte and we had to cancel because of COVID-19 so oh. we're looking forward to hosting that next year and it's uh, we'll be putting information on our Facebook page, and we'll have available information at the archives too once that uh, time is set up again, and who our speakers will be. And do you know about like what month or what season? Yep, September. September. We're looking at the September. weekend of like September twenty third. Okay. All right. One well, next year. Next year. Oh, that sounds like fun. Like everything. Everything's next year. Yes. Yes. Well, do you want to take another quick time out and then we Let's can come take back? Let's another time out. All right. Well, stay along with us as we'll continue our brown bag lunch with the Butte Sabo Archives here on the KBOW Party Line. When it comes to women's health, the team at Community Hospital of Anaconda delivers. Together, Dr. Glenn McLaughlin, Dr. Andrew Bognano, and Dr. Sildi Adelano provide the region's leading women's health and surgical services. Let the Community Hospital of Anaconda be your choice for your health. To learn more about their personalized services, visit communityhospitalofanaconda.org or you can call 563-8500. The Community Hospital of Anaconda, care for a lifetime. 
Brothers Water Treatment and Pump Service knows the importance of fresh, clean water. If you're on city water or a private well and have noticed scale buildup in your sinks or baths or noticed water marks on faucets, you have hard water. Consider an American-made WaterRite RC unit that pulls hardness and chlorine from your home's water. Easily reduce metals and minerals with a WaterRite air filtration system. With 40 years water experience, call Brothers Water Treatment and Pump Service 559-0261. Owned and operated by Wayne Brothers. Have you been thinking about a great steak? Find the best, fresh, never-frozen steaks at the Broken Arrow Steakhouse and Casino in Deer Lodge. You're invited to enjoy a dinner with all the trimmings. Remember, Prime Rib is the special on Friday and Saturday nights. The Broken Arrow thanks you for your continued patronage. The Broken Arrow Steakhouse and Casino opens seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Take the short drive to 317 Main Street in Deer Lodge, Montana. Call 846-3400 to place an order to go. Now offering sports betting. No matter how far you may go, there's always one just down the road. Town Pump, who pump it up? Pump it up. Your local Town Pump has a great deli. Right now they have delicious turkey club sandwiches for only $4.99. Grab a fresh brewed medium stone house coffee for only $1.49. Town Pump, quick, easy, convenient, and right down the road from you. Town Pump, right down the road. Pump it up. Oh, yeah. As we move through our Wednesday afternoon, 1.37, we're happy to have everyone along with us here on your hometown station. And with us today, we've got the Butte Srebo Public Archives along with the Butte Genealogy Society as we continue our Brown Bag Lunch Series here on your hometown station, KBOW, with the party line. And with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Kim. Thank you, Scott. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, what, what we can find online versus what is not online. I think there's a... Uh, misconception out there that everything is online and uh, really people don't realize that it takes a lot of person hours to get things online and get things searchable there's one thing to scan it and put it online but it's another thing to scan it so that a document is then searchable. So we have um, a lot of things in our facility that you cannot find online. There's some great stuff on, Julie, I know you use Ancestry a lot. I like to use um, FamilySearch.org, which um, is owned also by the LDS Church, but it's free because it depends on, uh, or it it really relies mostly on government documents, um, things that are are free to access anyway. Um, So a lot of those are online. Um, But then we have some great resources, like you pointed out, the Miner's Books. We have uh, another one of my favorite resources are the the State Mining Inspectors Books, because they give you a lot of great history by the mine company and by the mines. But they also give you some, it's the state, so he'll cover the whole state. And of course, most of the mining was you know, here in Silverbow County, so we're usually half the book. <laughs> and uh, But they will talk about all of the mines in the state. So if you are, if you live in Helena, or if you live, you know, somewhere outside of Butte, you can still access the, the you can come to our facility and access the mining inspector's reports. Um, another thing that we have, some things are online, but not everything is, and Julie mentioned that we should talk about them, are the immigration records. Um, you, we have the records of the second district court here in Butte, and part of those records are immigration records. And being such an international um, ethnic community, uh, they were great, great resource. So, Julie, do you want to talk about... I think every uh, person I've looked at, um, that uh, one of the things that I go to right away is 
the cards that has the listing of the naturalization uh, papers that are housed at the archives. Uh, they have the intent uh, records lots of times there, and so uh, that will list information um, along with the naturalization papers that say what ship they came over, when they came to America, what port they came through, uh, what place they left from. And so it's like seeing uh, their whole history right there. And what they looked like. What they look like, some pictures. Yeah, yeah Grandpa. The well, ones. the later ones have pictures, pictures but the other yeah. ones will say... Uh, they have a place for eye color, hair color, height, complexion, mm -hmm. dark, light, medium. Uh, so it really is fascinating. We should tell people when you are looking into immigrant uh, immigrant history, um, usually they the first step in your first papers would be to cl to declare your intent to become a citizen. So that's your declaration of intent, and then you had roughly on average about seven years mm -hmm. to prove your, uh, yourself a fine and upstanding citizen and then you had to gather your witnesses who could also had to be citizens um, who could testify that you were a productive and fine and upstanding citizen and that's when you would petition the court and a lot of times the declaration might be in one city may, maybe the port of entry uh, and then the petition might be in another city or even another court. Maybe you could petition the federal court, but your citizen was granted through maybe the, the district court or the state court, um, something. So if we can't find them, um, it doesn't mean that they weren't naturalized here. They just might be in the federal court, or maybe they were naturalized before they came or after they left Butte. Um, there's a lot of loopholes and information to be found things you need to know about immigration. <laughs> it's, it's really interesting to me to, f to see the number of young men and women that came uh, to Butte uh, to work uh, that became naturalized mm -hmm. citizens here, uh, had children. So you can look at the naturalization papers. You can look at the birth records. You can look at the death records, those school census records that we talked about. And uh, you get just a whole picture of, of a family. Yeah. We uh, have also then, um, from what Kim has requested us to do, I've gone out and taken pictures of buildings that are still standing. Uh, I've gone up to the Bureau of Mining and Geology and actually asked for plat maps for uh, some mines for my favorite man, William Farland, who I fell in love with. Who, uh, because we got a research, research request, request. <laughs> and they wanted to know just a little bit Good. about the Emma mine and yeah. and who Emma was. And we think she was part of our family. And oh, my goodness, it exploded. <laughs> we found out that uh, the Emma mine was related to the Travonia mines. The two brothers owned the mines. Um, they found a number of mines. They lived in Glendale, Montana, and there was actually a city named after the Farland family, and that's down by Beaverhead. And the family actually lived here for a number of years, and we found their graves um, uh, at the Holy Cross mm -hmm. uh, Cemetery and uh, actually places where they lived in those Sanborn maps. So it was a fun adventure. It is fun. It is fun. That's another thing that we have here is the uh, cemetery directories. So, like I said, sometimes we get super simple requests. Sometimes we get them from the cemetery. People are there on their cell phone, and they're kind of fed up because this is the third phone call they've made, and they don't know who to call to find out where Grandpa is buried. And I say, oh, just a minute, and we find them, and we, well, this is the row in the you know, he's in row, lot, grave number, whatever. So we can find where, where Grandma and Grandpa are buried. Um, back to a certain point, anyway, if they're buried here. Um, or where Grandma's leg is. There's sometimes, it seems <laughs> like there was a, a grave recently that just had the leg. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's really, it's really interesting, just all of the things that you are able to find on there. 
Um, and I especially like uh, the mining history, um, not growing up in Butte, uh, coming here as an adult, uh, just finding out the history of Montana. We had a request from a gentleman that's writing a book, and he is a Thompson, mm-hmm. and his uh, grandfather, great grandfather, was the mayor here for a couple of years. But turns out he originally came to Virginia City, and he uh, we found a huge amount of information about him in uh, the early Progressive Men of Montana book that the archives have. They have a wealth of um, historical books that I oftentimes go to and look for information. They have mining books um, Mm -hmm. from the 1900s when Butte uh, started with placer mining and then silver mining and then copper mining. And uh, I've found those very valuable for some information. But his, uh, his son then, the mayor's son then, was Bryce, William Bryce, Boyce Thompson, Boyce Thompson Boyce. Uh, who gave us Thompson Park. So that was a fun one to research as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one thing, we are, we are very blessed to have some amazing records here. Uh, in trying to research um, my family, especially my dad's side, well, and also the early early parts of my mom's side in either New York or in um, Vermont and Massachusetts and those areas, um, it, there are a lot of holes. You know, we have the accessibility of so much information, even online, that has been put online here. Uh, we have tremendous newspaper coverage. We have pretty much full coverage from 1880, maybe even a little earlier, up to the present day on, on that are available, you know, for a subscription uh, for newspapers.com. Whereas, you know, I go back east and they'll have a few years, you know, 10 years, 1820 to 1832. Really? That's it? <laughs> you know, for an important, you know, maybe for like Richmond, Virginia or something, you'd think that they would have more. But uh, so we're really lucky in the records that we can access here in Montana, um, both online and in person, I think, and um, like I said, I like to use FamilySearch.org. Mm-hmm. You use Ancestry.com, and um, I know with Ancestry you can get a membership to Newspapers.com. But if if you don't want to pay for membership, you can come up and use Newspapers.com uh, up at the archives, and we kind of use it as a directory almost. You can you can get on there and find the article, and then you can go and pull the actual newspaper not copies we have the actual bound volumes of newspapers from 1896 to 1962 and um, those are fun to look at if you want to look and see what else was happening beyond just the obituary or the article that you found Um, yeah one thing uh with uh, newspapers.com not all the years are there and sometimes uh, the archives has actual copies of mm-hmm. the newspapers that we don't um, have available on newspapers.com. A lot of people don't want to pay for Ancestry subscription, and so they can come to the archives, access that free mm-hmm. of charge, access the newspapers free of charge, print off whatever um, articles that they would like to have. Um, they can also... Um, look at family search there too and i know that uh, linda lee used the archives Mm -hmm. a lot for uh, researching an article that she did for her great grandparent right my great great grandfather who was the first uh, full-time assayer here Mm. and that, that was one of the first things i wanted to do when i retired was actually complete and publish something so i i used uh a lot of things at the archives to uh, research his life and had something published in uh, Western Jewish History Quarterly. Wow. Big, big, well-known publication. But but it was it was a, a, a really interesting process to do. And you, you learn so much from, from those newspaper articles. So tell me, when, it, when do you meet? When are the meetings? We meet the second Thursday 
of each month at 6.30. Uh, we will be meeting in October again. If you would like to give myself yeah. a call or the archives so that we know you would be coming so that we can open the doors to let you in. And again, we ask that you uh, social distance and wear a mask during that period of time. And we do let you have the meetings in our reading room, which, if you're familiar with the archives, is the main room. It's not in the auditorium. It's where it's where all the good stuff is. All of the the newspapers and the, the books and the computers and things like that. So what is the date of your meeting? Is it the 8th? For 8th? Is that our... I'm looking at the calendar over there. Does that sound right? Second Thursday is the 8th? Of October? Yes. Mm, sounds pretty close. Okay. <laughs> I'll double check the calendar <laughs> just to uh, be on the safe side here. And and what number What number should they call if they have uh, they questions? Call, uh, my number, 494-4934. Again, go on to the Facebook page. I was going to say, or on Facebook. And... Uh, also, uh, we have had some really interesting programs about using Facebook pages for looking at like German uh, uh, ancestries, uh, how to use ancestry, how to use family search. Um, and so uh, each uh, ethnic group actually has some really good Facebook pages that we refer people to lots of times to post questions. I'm a member of a Bear Peninsula page yep. and I, th I think half of Butte is yes. too <laughs> you all were shaking your heads like oh yeah I know <laughs> we could only yeah. uh, clone uh, their archives and archives our yes. archives together <laughs> we could answer most of the questions of the world <laughs> that's right that is right so is there a cost to join the genealogy society there is not no okay. uh, if you decide you want to join the state group uh, we do charge ten dollars a month, or ten dollars well, a year. Pardon me. That 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 is our our local dues is ten dollars a year. Okay. But we're pretty loose. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we just want you to be there. <laughs> just show up, right? Yes. And um, to use the archives because uh, let me tell you, I've researched a lot of times in the Midwest, and you have to go to the recorder's office you have to go to the library you have to go to the uh, clerk of court you have to go to the historical society here you just go to one place so you go to we're the a one-stop shop everything. huh yeah well thank you julie we we like to be known as a one-stop shop that you are so yeah. do you want to take uh, one quick time out and then we'll one come back and wrap things up that sounds good scott all right stay along with us and we'll be back with more of your brown bag lunch along with the butte archives here on your hometown station kbow thank you for your continued support of united way of butte and anaconda when you reach out a hand to one you influence the condition of all help build strength in our neighborhoods help bolster the health of our communities and change the lives of those who walk by you every day when you donate to United Way of Butte and Anaconda, you can designate to a special area of service or designate to any of the 13 nonprofit organizations they are working with. Donate online at uwbutteanaconda.org. Questions? Call 782-1255. Live United. Hi, this is Steve Daniel. Laura and I are so grateful to, by the grace of God, live in the United States, Montana, and especially this fabulous community of Butte. Southwestern Montana is such a wonderful place to live, work, and raise a family. What makes it so great are the people and organizations who continually strive to make Butte even greater. Laura and I invite you to join us as we look eagerly toward continuing to live, work, and serve in Butte, Montana, in these United States of America. Two bedrooms, a bath and a half, patio and fenced yard with a two-car garage. Four bedrooms, two full baths, a new kitchen, acreage. Four acres, close to the mountains, at least 2,000 square feet. Uptown Butte, bigger yard, new plumbing and electrical, and at least three bedrooms. What type of home are you looking for? Janelle Morgan with Century 21 Shea Realty wants to help make your dream home your new home. Call her today at 490-7945. That's Janelle Morgan with Century 21 Shea Realty at 490-7945 in Butte. There's always fun in motion at the Big Red Barn. Old-fashioned service, that's what sets us apart. Where you can win and laugh out loud. The hokey pokey is what it's all about. Where neighborhood people have good old-fashioned fun. There's always something here for everyone. Everybody knows the place to go. Crazy Carol's Casino in Mill Bar. 
Welcome back to the KBOW Party Line, another Brown Bag Lunch series, uh, continuing along with the Butte Archives and the Butte Genealogy Society. And with that, it's Kim. All right, it's me. That was my best TV announcer voice. So. <laughs> it's me, and I'm going into my radio announcer voice. Uh, me and Julie and uh, Linda Lee. So Julie brought up a really good point to me over the break, is that... Um, the people can use the services of the Genealogy Society for free. You can call and even just say, hey, can you get me started? You might not want them to do all the work. You want to have some of the fun because it is fun playing Nancy Drew. Mm -hmm. And um, you can come to the meetings or you can call Julie and say, can you just, how do I start? And she can get you started and give you some guidance and hold your hand a little bit. Um, if you're out of town or you just can't get up to the archives, um, you can submit a request. Most of our requests either come through email or um, through our uh, website, which is uh, buttearchives.org. And there's a place in there that says search our collections or request um, assistance. And uh, we charge $25 uh, for about an hour of work. Um, we usually don't go over more than two hours. Um, our typical charges, I'd say, are be between 35 and $60, because we also charge for copies that we make or scans that we send. And um, we, uh, so those come through. I get those, and uh, we get to play Nancy Drew. But that usually takes about four to six weeks as well, because we get backed up, and we get requests official requests from all over the world. Um, usually they're in English, and sometimes it's in broken English, but we can understand them just fine. And um, uh, it's, it's really good. So if you want uh, some free research assistance, give Julie or Linda Lee a call, either through Facebook, um, through their Facebook page, Butte Silver Bow Genealogy Society. Um, or just come on up to the archives. We do request during COVID that you call and make an appointment. And we are always, all of the staff up there uh, are happy to help you. We all take turns being on reference. So whoever comes in, um, when you come in, we assign you uh, an archivist and they uh, can set you on your way. So I just want to give a little plug about our next Brown Bag Lunch on the radio is going to be um, in three weeks because we do these the second and fourth Wednesday. And it's going to be all archives. It's going to be me talking with uh, Aubrey Jap, And Aubrey has been on the program before. But we're going to explain a little bit about what it means to maintain the government record because that really is our primary purpose at the Butte Archives is the maintenance of the non-current government record. So we will explain what non-current means, we will explain what the government record is, um, how young or how old it is, and, and uh, what our role is in preserving the record of our local government. Wow. Well, I'm going to be looking forward to that one. I, I hope you're here. Well, you never know. I, I might be out there listening. But once again, uh, we're out of time. So thank you very much, ladies, for uh, coming in today and for, um, you know, broadening my horizons as well as our listeners out there. Thank you so much, thank Scott. You. You're welcome. And so with that, uh, we'll return with McRingsack on the KBOW Party Line for you tomorrow. And we thank you for being along with us here on your hometown station. Harrington Surgical Supply takes this moment for the many people of Butte in southwestern Montana in reminding everyone that thermometers, hand sanitizer, and face masks are all back in stock. Take precautionary measures to help slow the spread of COVID-19 by doing your part. It's important for us to wear masks and keep social distance between others while practicing good daily hygiene habits. Har Harrington Surgical Supply, proudly serving Montana since 1946 at 53 East Broadway in historic Uptown Butte. Place your orders at Harrington Surgical Supply by calling 723-6541. With school getting started, it's a perfect time for all of us to model and teach kindness. You may forget what someone said to you, but you never forget how someone made you feel. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. This announcement is brought to you by the Butte Four Seas. The Butte Four Seas, located at 101 North Main Street in historic Uptown Butte, open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 723-4019 with questions. 
The mornings and evenings are cool. The days are warm. You can feel it. The seasons are changing. The Wise River Mercantile says fall is a great time to take a drive through the big hole. Whether that drive includes a night in the camper or tent, a hunting or fishing excursion, or wildlife and history viewing, you're sure to find everything you're looking for in the big hole. Stop at the Wise River Mercantile along the way for all your supplies, fuel, and information. The Wise River Mercantile by the Big Hole River in Wise River, Montana. KBOW Butte, We're home for original reporting. I'm Deborah Rodriguez. Outrage in the streets of Louisville, Kentucky, over charges against one of three police officers involved in the death of a 26-year-old black woman. This is ridiculous! This is beyond ridiculous! Y'all murdered Breonna Taylor! Taylor was sleeping inside her home when officers opened fire. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron says the white officers who fatally shot 26-year-old Brianna Taylor in her Louisville apartment March 13th were not carrying out a no-knock warrant. Evidence shows that officers both not...